faith. Some call it the currency of the kingdom. Why is faith so important? Because faith is the assurance of what we hope for, the proof of what we cannot see. And that which we cannot see, by the way, determines what we can. You see? Hey friends, family of God, what's going on? Welcome back to The Reboot. This is the Divine Reset, Refresh and Reform. God continues to do, and we're gonna talk about why he's doing that in just a minute. But if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified whenever we upload or go live. I'm in the middle of a kind of a mini series on the kingdom of God, and it's critically important that we talk about the kingdom of God as it pertains to the coming revival. Everyone's been praying about revival, but we're not gonna be able to go from reset to revival until we understand the secrets to the kingdom of God. And so we're unpacking more about the kingdom today. Why is God doing a reset? Because simply what we thought was working before <laughs> wasn't working. Um, and, and God has the final say in that, doesn't he? You know. Um, the way we were doing church, the way that we were going about things, just simply needed a reset, needed a reboot, and God used uh, current events and what's going on you know, uh, in the world, and the shaking that we're experiencing is definitely extending over into uh, the church, and I'm talking about the institution of the church, um, the system, the religious system that needs to change, and it must change if we're going to go from reset to revival, if we're going to experience the revival that we've all been wanting, the higher things, the higher purposes, right, the great move of God. However you define revival really doesn't matter. Revival is simply an awakening. It's, it's bringing the dead to life, and also bring some things that need to die <laughs> to a place of death. Don't look for the living among the dead. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead, you come follow me. So don't be concerned and, and, and over preoccupied with politics and the things that are going on in the world. There are a lot of prophets out there that just want to concentrate on what God is doing you know, in politics and certainly God has a say, but he's more concerned about us understanding and operating and moving and flowing in the kingdom of God. And we're not going to be able to do that without the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to talk more about the Holy Spirit's role in the kingdom of God and your ability to access and operate in kingdom realities and to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. It's so important because Jesus said, I want you to occupy until I return. I want you to go make disciples, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and yes, cast out demons. We're starting to see deliverance return to the body of Christ in a greater dimension like we've never seen. And that's simply because we need to uh, affect uh, the spirit realm in order to affect this realm. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna kick this all off with a scripture out of Hebrews where uh, it says, in, in, out of chapter 11, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. We've talked a lot about faith. Faith is the doorway that can access the, the realm of the unseen and bring those realities and what God says and what God is doing into, into our dimension. So faith is the doorway. We've talked about how faith can access, faith can see, faith can hear into that realm and, and, and release that into ours. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe here's the key, was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The unseen world created our natural reality. It was created and, and brought forth through the Spirit. I want to get into this a little bit deeper and use an analogy. I got my laptop here. So an analogy would be, let's look at this screen, right? Is what you see on this screen just created from, from this, this area right here? No. Inside this 
this computer, if I took the back off, you would see all the microchips, you would see all the circuitry. What's going on inside here affects this screen. What I see on the screen is determined from what's underneath the screen. From what we see here on Earth, what we see in this natural dimension, in this realm, is, is and has been determined from the spiritual realm. If we have a spiritual problem, we must deal with it there. We can't affect that realm from this realm. So how do we do that? <laughs> the reason why God's doing a reset and a reboot, refresh and reform is because Christianity has run from the very one person, and he is a person, who can help us because he's got one foot in this realm and one foot in that realm at the very same time. People are trying to access the supernatural dimension, trying to access the paranormal. You see all the paranormal shows on cable. You see the ghost hunters trying to apprehend and understand the spiritual world because they know that world affects this one. They know that there's something greater, there's something more, right, than, the, than what, we can, what we can see, what we can touch. So they're accessing, you know, with their, with their intellect, they're trying to find ways apart from God's spirit, you know, to, to gain an understanding of that realm. Kids are playing with Ouija boards in a basement. Whether you know it or not, they're turning to witchcraft and astrology in different forms of the occult in order to gain access to a greater dimension that they know this isn't all there is. And what this is, what, what, I, what you see here, <laughs> was formed by the unseen world. How do we see into the unseen world? We talked about the doorway of faith, but I'm going to tell you, we do it through the Holy Spirit, through the infilling, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, who is, who is connected, who is intimately uh, you know, wired in unity with our own spirit, man. We are a spirit. We are actually three-part beings as God is a three-part being. We're, we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. We have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we can gain access into the realm that we need to gain access in order to bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done aren't simply words. We can repeat words out of the Bible in a carnal way, in a fleshly way. We can even pray in Jesus' name. We've seen people do it. We've seen people use Jesus' name and not get anything done. They said, whoa, 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 that's, that's, that's heresy, that's impossible. The name of Jesus is above every name. If you pray in his name, all these, you know, you're going to get what you ask for. Well, let me ask you about the seven sons of Sceva who try to cast out demons in Jesus' name. But because they didn't know him, because they didn't have a relational connection, they couldn't just use that name. Jesus has to be Lord. He has to be king. And he has to live on the inside. We must be born again, born of the spirit. Jesus said, you must be born again. Now I'm going to tell you out of John why it's so important to speak life and not death. And I'm not talking about being positive and encouraging. I'm talking about yielding your vocal cords to the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. It counts for nothing. It's useless. The words that I speak are spirit and their life. Don't you think that we would get a lot more done in this realm if we learned how to get more done in that one? <laughs> this is why it's so critically important that we access the spirit. And the only way to do that is through partnership, through communion, by hearing him, seeing him, following his lead. Jesus could only do what he saw the Father doing. Through faith, we speak what God is speaking. We do what we see him doing, and we bring it forth and make it real. But the answer to our prayers lies in our ability to access that unseen realm in order to, to even cast out a demon. We must have authority in that realm. We can't just simply just read our Bible, read our Bible. 
and mine's pretty torn up. Yeah, I can know it backwards and forwards. The devil knows the word backwards and forwards. But it's the spirit and the word together that can move mountains. Never neglect, never discount or discard your partnership with the Holy Spirit. Apart from Him, you can't do anything and you'll never see that revival you've been praying for. Thanks again for watching and if this has blessed you, please give me a like, introduce yourself in the comment section below and I'll talk to you again soon.